Hello, welcome back. We're going to do the lecture of Revelation chapter 10. We're going to get into Revelation chapter 11. We're going to start with um, Luke 10, uh, verse 18 through 20. Remember that in our last lecture, we were referring to thunder is after action. The action is lightning. Symbolically meaning is this. Luke 10, verse 18. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan and lightning fall from heaven. And behold, I give you the power to tread on serpents and scorpions and the power of all power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you, notwithstanding. And this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you. So he gives you the power to cast out the evil spirits in his name. And that's what he's referring to here. Okay. Remember, when you do cast them out, you always want to make sure you tell them to return to where they came from in the name of Jesus Christ. And the other part I'd like to read to you is Ma um, Matthew 13. This is the sower, but this is parable of the tares. He opens his mouth in parables because not everybody what I have eyes to see and is to hear. So this is Christ teaching his disciples. He's, he's actually explaining the parable of the tares, and we know the tares as the Canaanites. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. They are the actual biological offspring, though the Kenites. 39. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, which we know is around October. It's a pretty good, it's a pretty good time for Christ to return, don't you think? Um Satan coming in May through September as of when the locust sprung is where they're getting that from. Reduced from seven years to five months. Revelation chapter 9, verse 5 and 10. Um, the harvest is the end of the world and the reapers are the angels. The reapers are the angels because we don't, this is a race of evil people and we don't know who they are, but the angels do. And they're going to gather them up and put them in the fire. So they tell us not to do anything. Don't touch them. Let the angels be the reapers. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire. So shall it be in the end of the world. The son of man shall send forth his angels. And they shall gather out his kingdom of all things. That offend. Nothing that offends will live in the eternity. And them which do iniquity. And shall cast them into a furnace of fire. They are to either be consumed or they're going into the lake of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. That's also going to come to play too. When even the good people of the world realized for five months they worshipped Satan because they believed he was Jesus Christ. That's why we have the Lord's Day, which is the millennium. They will be taught doctrine and they will have that second chance. They will be taught that discipline. 43. And then shall the righteous shine forth as the son in the kingdom of their father who have ears to hear, let him hear. Remember, not all do, but quite a few of us do. So now we're back in Revelation. We want to finish up 10. We're going to start with verse 9. And I went, and we're going to remember that this is John taken in the spirit of the Lord's day. This is prophetic to us. This is the future. So this has not happened yet. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it, eat it up, and shall make, and it shall make the belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. Well, we know the word of God is beautiful, so it is sweet as honey. But it's bitter to the belly because not everybody believes it. We have a lot of people that don't believe in it, or they're auto worshippers, or they're reading out of a fictional fairy tale Bible or they have no interest, or they're scoffers. So it is bitter to digest, and it can be bitter to the ones that are teaching it also because they don't believe it. It's frustrating. Verse 10, And I took the little book out of the angel's hand, and I ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter uh, because it, it, it is, it is uh, difficult when you see people that won't believe um, or don't. Uh, make the effort to uh, have faith in their heavenly Father. Verse 11, And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many people's tongues, nations, and kings. That's a cloven tongue. 
And that's going to be, you know, when God's elect speak it, um, it's going to be not their words. It's going to be God speaking through you, but it's going to be, you know, the elect, it'll be their mouth and their body that God will use. But as usual, he says, do not premeditate. I will speak through you. And every language will hear it in their own language at the same time with no need of a translator. That is the holy tongue. And that will also take place probably closer to the middle or the somewhat end of Satan's five-month reign. Revelation chapter 11, verse 1. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. Now we know this is where the many-membered body comes in, but this rod is not an actual measuring rod. This is a rod of correction, and we're going to go to Lamentations to read exactly why that would be. Lamentations chapter 2, verse 7. The Lord hath cast off his altar. He hath abhorred his sanctuary. He hath given up into the hand of the enemy the walls of her palaces. Basically, this is Satan sitting where he, where he ought not, which is the He is actually sitting in Jerusalem, claiming to be Christ. He is the false Christ. They have made a noise in the house of the Lord, as in the day of Solomon's feast. The Lord hath purposed to destroy the wall of the daughter of Zion, and he hath stretched out a line. He hath not withdrawn his hand either from destroying. Therefore he made the rampart and the wall to limit. Uh, they languished together. Very important. Now remember what we just read. Satan was sitting where he ought not into the walls of, or into the, the temple of our Heavenly Father or God. Okay. But listen to what Christ tells his disciples. And he went out of the temple one of his disciples saith unto him, Master, see what manner of stones, what buildings are here. It's the same building we were discussing, just non-lamentations. And Christ answered, said unto him, Seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. After Satan reigns for five months, Christ will, in, in the, on the Lord's day, We'll be in the millennium. We'll all be in our spiritual bodies. Christ is going to rebuild that temple. He will not reign where death, Satan, has sat. So it's kind of interesting there that we're referring to the rod of correction as it is stated in Revelation 11. 1. Returning to 11 of Revelation verse 2, but the court which is without the temple, leave out the measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, which is the nations, and the holy cities shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. This is measured in lunar. We have to remember that it's been reduced to five months. It's not three and a half, two, three and a half year increments anymore. It is two, two and a half month increments now. So that's measured in the lunar, which is the moon. Basically what he's doing is he's getting Jerusalem set up for the Lord's day. The people that did not make it, the people that will be taught discipline, the people that will be taught doctorate will be in this area of Jerusalem. Verse 3, And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. Now this is solar days. Also keeping in mind it's been reduced to five months. Okay. And his two witnesses are going to have the power over nature, and they're going to have the power over people. And what's very important to understand about these two witnesses, it's important that you understand documented who they are, because it is written, okay? Now, we're referring to two people that's used that staff before, okay? Um, let me see. Now we know, let me go to read verse 4 real quick. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. Very important that you remember that verse. God of the earth. They're the, basically the two olive trees, olive oil, 
okay, is what we use to heal. It's healing ointment. And the two candlesticks represents the church, represents the righteousness, okay? So we're going to get into it a little bit here to the nitty-gritty to see if we can find out who these two witnesses are. So we want to go to Zechariah chapter 4. We're going to start with verse 9. The hands of uh, Zer Zerubiel, or you call it Zerubbabel, however you want to call it, have laid the foundation of this house. His hand shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. Now, Zerubiel is basically means Babylon, but people that come out of Babylon, people that are born in confusion, but yet manage to come out. And we know that there's 7,000 of them that have come out of that Babylon and that confusion. They're called God's elect. So when you think of Zer Zerubiel or Zerubbabel, uh, whatever you want to call it, people pronounce it differently. You may go ahead and think of God's elect because that's exactly what it is. Verse 10. For who, ha who hath dis despised the day of the small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven, which is spiritual completeness, the 7,000. They are the eyes of the Lord. This is the 7,000 elect which run to and fro the whole earth. Now, what the, what the, what the witnesses are going to basically be doing on the sixth trump is they're going to be simply guiding the elect. Verse 11, Then answered I and said unto him, and this is Zechariah, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? And I answered again and said unto him, what be these two olive branches, which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? That's symbolic to the nutrients and the enrichment of the oil coming out of the two, the two witnesses and into the elect to keep us guided and to keep us, um, what you may want to say, maybe calm cool collective that's what they're going to be doing and he answered me and said knowest thou not what these be and i said no my lord then said he these are the two anointed ones that stand by the lord of the whole earth and remember i asked you to remember that from revelation 11 so please remember the lord of the whole earth now, here we go. Here's Matthew 17. We're going to start with verse 1. And this is Jesus Christ and his disciples. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, John, and his brother, and bringeth them up into the high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah talking with them. Now, Moses and Elijah, this is what this is what it's referring to when it says standing on the mount of the whole earth in both Zechariah and Revelation. It's referring to these two entities right here, Moses and Elijah, who was taken by God in the flesh. Enoch was also taken in the flesh. But we know that Moses and Elijah have that experience with the staff. We know the Elijah through Second Kings. Uh burned up two or three sets of 50 men because God protects his own. We know that Moses had the staff when he took the, um, uh, the Israelites when he was, when he was attempting and he did uh, free the Israelites from the Pharaoh in Egypt. So we have, we have two people here that have used that staff before and lo and behold, in revelation, we're going to read it again. They'll be using it once more verse 4 then answered peter and said unto jesus lord it is good for us to be here if thou wilt let us make here three tabernacles which is like tents one for thee and one for moses and one for elijah while he yet spake behold a bright cloud overshadowed them and behold a voice out of the cloud, which said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased here. Yeah, him. Obviously that was 
Yahweh. And when the disciples heard it, of course, they fell on their face and they were sore afraid. Going back to Revelation chapter 11, we're going to pick it up at verse 5. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devour their enemies. He must in this manner be killed. Remember in Revelation chapter 9, it says, he told Satan, he gave strict orders to Satan, uh, do not touch my anointed. Thou shalt not touch my anointed. Well, guess what? Verse 6. These have power to shut heaven, that is rain, not in the days of the prophecy, and have power over waters. We know waters in Revelation 17 means people, to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all the plagues as often as they will. Now, this is probably when it comes to the people, the plagues are going to affect them. But they do have the power to control nature as well. Verse 7. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. Now we know this beast of the bottomless pit is referring to none other than Satan himself. If you read Revelation chapter 17, verse 8, it will tell you that the beast is Satan. Verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie into the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. We know that our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified there in Golgotha. Taking a little journey to Psalms chapter 79, verse 1. Um, it was prophesied about a thousand or so years before this happened that the two witnesses would be killed and their bodies would be laid out into the streets. 79, verse 1. O God, the heathen are come into thine inheritance. Thy holy temple have they defiled. They have laid Jerusalem on heaps. The dead bodies of thy servants have they given to be meat unto fowls of the heaven, the flesh of thy saints unto the beasts of the earth, which obviously they didn't get eaten. They didn't get eaten or anything, but that's just what would happen to a dead body if it was left there. Verse 3, their blood have they shed like water round about Jerusalem, and there was none to bury them. Now we know that Satan didn't have them buried. Well, number one, God wouldn't allow it, okay, because these witnesses will eventually rise in three and a half days. And that is exactly how we know, almost precisely, when, when Jesus Christ will return on the seventh trump, when the seventh trump will sound. But also we got to keep in mind that Satan did not want them martyred and the people that was worshiping Satan because they, they absolutely believed he was Jesus Christ were dancing around him, making fun of them, partying around them, glad that they got killed. There were nothing but two annoying, nasty little creatures that were bothering them and so forth. It's very interesting. Uh, that won't last too long. Picking it up, Revelation 11, verse 9, and they, and they, all the people and kindreds and tongues and nations, this is a lot of different people, shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Verse 10, and they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them. Remember I said they were going to party and dance and carry on and make merry and shall send gifts to one another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. They don't even know what torment is. They're about to find, well, they will find out, because this is all future to us. Verse 11, And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. Now, I want to make this perfectly clear. This is the same spirit of life that entered Adam and gave him life. A.R., is the spiritual body air okay it's air because your body your 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 body that you're going to have in the eternity is a spiritual air body so he breathed air into them and gave them their soul 
is what he did, just like he did with Adam. Okay. And they stood upon two feet and great fear fell upon the ones that watched them. We're not talking about, oh, you gave me a fright. We're talking about in the Greek, a pipita, paralyzing fear, because they realized they've been had. They realized they worship Satan. They realized that they have been deceived for the last five months and they were scared to death. Verse 12. And they heard a great voice come from, they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, which I think would be a motor vehicle. (laughs) And their enemies beheld them, one of those flying ships. Oh, and at the same hour was there a great earthquake and a tenth part of this city fell. And in the earthquake was slain of the seven, the men of 7,000. Now, this is the remnant of Satan. Uh, Satan's fallen angels were sentenced to death for what they did in Genesis chapter 6 when they left their habitat and they seduced the daughters of Adam. Being in a supernatural body, there was no repentance. So God had use for them all up until now. Now the seventh trump is sounding. Christ is returning. God has no more use for them. There is 7,000 dead bodies laying in Jerusalem. And they are known as 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 the 7,000 fallen angels. This is the remnant of Satan. Um, And then the remnant, affrighted, gave glory to God in heaven. This is the second woe that's passed. And behold... The third woe cometh quickly. And here we go. Verse 15. The seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty-four elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God. Now, let me go ahead and teach you again what's going to happen to you on the seventh trump, okay? And I will also teach you what people are getting this confused with. Paul teaches it very clearly in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We're going to start with verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery a mystery some sounds familiar like the mystery of the five month reign of satan why is it a mystery your denominational teachers aren't teaching it we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed 52 very important in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump we are at the last trump the seventh trump is the last trump christ has returned The trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. So we shall be changed from flesh into our incorruptible bodies, which is our air bodies, our spiritual body. Here's something very fascinating in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. It's written again. It means the exact same thing. Okay. 4. Verse chapter 4, verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent, which is to proceed them which are asleep. Well, we can't beat our great great grandparents in death because they're already with them. So that kind of makes sense. That's an example of that. 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from the heaven with a shout. With the voice of the archangel, no doubt that's Michael. It is Michael. And with the trump of God, that's the seventh trump. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. They're already with him, of course. He's grabbing his army. He's grabbing people that didn't make the first cut. And he's coming to earth. We're not going to him. He's coming here. We're about ready to go into the third earth age, which is the eternity. That's going to be the new Jerusalem. Revelation chapter 21 for documentation for the Lord himself shall descend from the heavens. Okay. And with the trump of God, the dead in Christ shall rise first. They're already there. 
then we which are alive on earth and remain, we're waiting for him to show up, okay, shall be caught up together with them. We're going to be changed into our spiritual bodies to match the ones that have already died before us and are with the Lord today because they're already in their spiritual body. So he's just coming on the seventh trump to turn us into what they already are. Okay? going to come in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. This is not atmospheric air, guys. This is your air body. In the Greek, it's AR. This is your spiritual body. So we're going to meet the Lord in our air body, and we're going to be changed into a twinkling of an eye, just like it said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and just like it says in Revelation 11, so we can be with the Lord forever and ever and ever. And this is where a lot of people teach rapture. They think they're going to fly out of here. They think they're going to be raptured away. This is Satan's, one of, one of Satan's most well-accomplished accomplished lies that he has uh, displayed. A lot of people will take the mark of the beast because they're waiting for a rapture that will never come because him and his fallen angels went back to 1830 and made the whole thing up through a demonic possession.